Now, more than 40 countries at a summit of European leaders have agreed a plan to make Russia pay for its war in Ukraine. The register of damages has been one of the major talking points at the Council of Europe meeting in the Icelandic capital, Reykjavik. Also high on the agenda is a push by the Prime Ministers of the UK and the Netherlands to build an international coalition to boost Ukraine's air combat capabilities. Day two of the Council of Europe summit in Iceland got off to a stormy start, but with a clear signal. More than 40 countries approved a system to document the destruction in Ukraine caused by Russia. Germany says it'll help finance this register of damage. As a first step, the aim of the damage register is to ensure and enforce accountability. Russia must pay for the damage it has caused. Ukraine's Prime Minister Denis Shmichal said the register was a milestone on the path towards justice and reparations. Turkey, Hungary and Serbia said they will not participate in the damage register. But Iceland's Prime Minister Katrin Jakob's daughter was nevertheless pleased by the strong consensus. It's not a surprise that not everybody signs, but I am very happy that the overwhelming majority is signing the damage register. On the sidelines of the meeting, there were talks on providing fighter jets for Ukraine. The UK and the Netherlands are trying to form an international coalition. Democracies like ours must build resilience so that we can out-cooperate and out-compete those who drive instability. For his part, the German Chancellor reiterated that his government currently has no plans to deliver combat aircraft to Kyiv. So what difference would those uh, modern uh, Western fighter jets make to Ukraine's defence efforts? I asked defence analyst Marina Myron from King's College London. Well, thank you for having me. Um, these jets would definitely help the Ukrainian side, especially um, in light of the looming counteroffensive. The Ukrainians would be able to strike Russian targets from a safer distance, as well as use these jets as a close air support should the combined arms operation indeed take place. And given the fact that um, Ukraine didn't have that many fighter jets, Soviet-era fighter jets to start with, and lost some during the war with Russia, it definitely lacks um, capability in, in this specific area. Right. Uh, and, and it has had some of those uh, Soviet-era uh, jets from countries uh, like uh, Poland. But, but Mr. Zelensky has been quite specific about wanting F-16s. Yes, the F-16s, the reason why he's, he's wanting F-16s, because these are forest-generation fighter jets, which ironically would be able to deliver the store sh shadow missiles. Um, and these jets are kind of, you know, in layman's terms, a counterpart to, to the Russian MiG-29. They are somewhat different, but these jets um, are kind of multi-capabilities. They can operate in all weather conditions. They can engage air targets, um, targets at sea targets on the ground so they're quite versatile and they they're quite economical uh, making them ideal for for the ukrainian um air force to use uh, so what does it tell us that this initiative uh, this uh, british and dutch initiative uh, this is a european initiative starting without the united states well, it is very interesting because, you know, the, the UK said that it, it is already training F-16 pilots. Uh, that being said, the UK itself doesn't have any F-16 fighter jets. That being said, I think this initiative uh, has started in order to open the floodgates and to have other countries um, be ready to send their fighter jets to Ukraine. And I, I think that the, the United States uh, have been very cautious as well, you know, with the fighter jets, as well as delivering long range um, at the camps to Ukraine. And now we're seeing Rishi Sunak um, approving the delivery of um, um, storm shadow missiles, which are long range missiles. They are the longest range missiles that Ukraine has received so far. So I think the UK now with, with the Netherlands are leading kind of this coalition in order to encourage encourage other countries to contribute and the hope is that the United States will play along and, and will 
send F-16 fighter jets, knowing that Ukraine has already prepared for receiving them. They have the pilots, assuming the air crews will be trained and all the kind of the logistics uh, will be sorted out, because those are very important components. And, you know, for the counteroffensive, um, there is just not enough time to make this right. all work. But the hope is to strengthen the Ukrainian capability in the future. As ever, that's very clear. Thank you for that, Defence Analyst Marina Myron. Thank you.